family, brother, we can have the, the first one. Thank you. Um, I had the privilege wow, Wednesday night to share in the men's group a few challenges that we have had as the Fouché family in, uh, in, in our life. Um, and getting into the challenges and getting out of the, the, the challenges. And I want to speak to, as my brothers and sisters this morning, I want to speak to your hearts this morning, not your minds. I want to speak to your hearts this morning um, concerning uh, challenges that we have gone through or maybe are going through or maybe flat out sitting in a challenge right now in your life where it might seem as if there is no way out, absolutely no, no way out. Now, why I want to um, share this this morning, I, I spent time with the Lord um, this week and, and this kept on coming up. Um, not only what I shared on, on Wednesday with my, my brothers, but so many people during the week and even last week that have been speaking to me and, and other brothers and sisters uh, about things that have happened in their life, out of the blue, blink of an eye, your life changes. And now we as sons and daughters of God, we have to try and sort it out. And I want to start off with two questions this morning before we get into a powerful scripture in the Word of God. The first question is, um, have you ever, you don't have to answer it out loud, you can answer it to, to yourself. Sitting here today, have you ever paid for somebody else's mistake? You had nothing to do with it, but you paid for it dearly. And when I say mistake, we can add all sorts of other things in there. Have you ever paid for somebody else's sin? Have you ever paid for somebody else's blatant disregard for your life? And they just wanted to climb the ladder and you were one of the stepping stones. Has that ever happened to you? And if it has, if we sit and we think this morning, if you were successfully able to come out of it, I'm pretty sure that you can raise your hand this morning and say the only way that I got through and out of that still standing, still breathing, still wanting to love Jesus, was because of Him. Amen? Amen. And so, that's the first question. Have you ever paid for someone's mistake or someone's sin? The next question before we get into the scripture is, while you were paying for someone else's mistake or sin, was there someone in your life that came along and helped you out of it? I'm pretty sure that 90% of us can say no. There were people that tried, but they couldn't. I was stuck in there until I was chin deep in water, reaching out to Christ, standing on the water. That's normally what happens in, in, in our lives. And as I was spending time with the Lord this, this week, and, and this scripture came up that we are going to there was one thing that was ringing through my, my, my soul. One thing, the, the, the whole week, I, I, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I, I couldn't stop singing it. There's even a song connected to it. Is if there was ever someone that loved your soul and my soul more than his own life, it is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the lover of our souls. Family, if you're sitting here this morning and you've had the privilege on this earth to meet a faithful, loyal, loving spouse, you will know the power of unity in love. It is mind-blowing. It's earth-moving. Amen? If you have someone that stands with you day and night through thick and thin, whether you've got money, whether you don't have money, whether you are good looking or not, if they stand with you in everything, you will know the power of, of that. Now, I want to go a step further and say not all of us have yet been blessed with that. Not saying you won't be. 
But if you physically have not yet been blessed with that family, if you are sitting here this morning and you have a longing and a desire for that unity and that love, seek the face of Jesus, find Him. He, he doesn't hide Himself, He's there. He states that in the Word of God. He's there to be found, we must just find Him. And once you have found Jesus, I can guarantee you as Jacques Fouchet, flawed man, plain and simple fisherman for Jesus, that once you find Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of God, nothing else on this earth will matter more than Jesus. Amen? You will still have a life. You'll still have a husband or wife. You will still have children. You'll still go to a job. You will still love certain things in life, hate certain things in life. But nothing else will matter more than loving Jesus, spending time with Jesus, holding on to the cloak of Jesus. Nothing else will matter more. Nothing, family. Amen. You will get to a point in your life where things will hit you and you will know with everything inside of me. I don't know how physically, but I do know that I'm going to get through this. Whether it is on my life here on earth or in a wooden box, I'm going to get through this. Because the lover of my soul is standing right next to me. Why? Because he promised me he would. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm standing at your right hand. Jesus does not hide himself, family. Sometimes we hide from him, foolishly, thinking he can't see and hear. But Jesus is always there. And so this morning, I want to climb into a powerful scripture. If you have your, your Bibles with you, good idea to follow with me, to see that you are not being deceived. Amen. The book of Romans chapter 8. The book of Romans chapter 8. We are going to read from verse 18. I'm speaking this morning to the sons and daughters of God that are going through something right now. That are calling out for help, but it seems as if there's no help around. There's nobody that understands, there's nobody that, that hears, there's nobody that gives you the help that you need. You are asking for help and maybe people are giving you help but it's not the help that you need. Amen? And so I'm speaking to you this morning, family. And not me as Jacques, but the Word of God is going to encourage you this morning. Romans chapter 8 verse 18. I, cons I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that has been revealed. Is it to us or in us? Amen. Now, family, I can go through things here on earth. I can go through battles and struggles here on earth. Anxiety and stress can hit me from all sides. Okay? But this scripture will not make sense in my life if it is to me and not in me. People can try and reveal things to you and me, but we will never click it until it is revealed in you and me. Amen? Through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches us this very um, right of this book. The Bible teaches us that we as human beings are temples of the Holy Spirit. We are walking churches. And the preacher in this church is not Jacques. No, no, no. It's the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The best preacher ever. Amen? And so we are walking, talking, living, active, breathing churches every single day. Not only Sunday, not only Christmas, not only Easter. Every single day that we step out of our house, homes, houses, whatever we want to call it, we are Churches that can minister to non-churches. There's lots of other buildings in Altham as well that aren't churches. There's lots of other human beings walking around us that also aren't churches. We need to step into these businesses, family, and minister Jesus to them. 
They never come into this building. We must go into theirs. Amen? And if we are sons and daughters of God, the Word of God states that we, we, rule and reign here on earth. The Bible does say that Satan is, or the enemy is, the, 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 the ruler and the principalities. Um, but through and in Jesus, we are here to conquer, family, to rule and to reign. The lost souls out there, they belong to Christ, they just don't know it yet. We must make them aware of that fact. Amen? How beautiful is that to go to someone that is addicted to drugs, pornography, has cheated on their <coughs> wives, kicked and, 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 and abused their, their children, and walk straight up to them and say, Hey brother, hey sister, do you know that there is a love of your soul? There's someone that loves you more than his own life. There's someone that came down and gave absolutely everything so that you do not have to live like this anymore. You don't have to grab a bottle. You don't have to grab a substance. You do not have to lift your hands. You don't. Jesus came so that we can lay all those things down and still have victory. Amen? Verse 19. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Family, let this scripture be burned into our minds, bodies, souls, and spirits this morning. This world is waiting for us to be revealed to them. Somehow, this world has taught us that we have to be afraid of that. We have to be scared. Oh, oh, don't, don't, don't talk in, 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 in the workplace about Jesus. The, the, just, it's, it's, it's frowned upon. It's, it's a no-no. Family, listen to what the scripture says. This world is waiting for us to be revealed. They're waiting for it. How are they waiting? By screaming and shouting and cussing and drinking and using drugs. That's how they, they're crying out to us that we will reveal ourselves to them, family. To show them there's a better way. There's a far better way. There is something, for a lack of a better word or term, that we can be addicted to, that we don't have to buy every day, that we don't have to spend our money on every day, that we don't have to harm our bodies, minds, souls, and spirits for every day. And His name is Jesus. Amen? Family, if you've met Christ, you'll know what I'm saying now. You can simply not get enough of Him. You can't. There isn't enough time in the day to spend with Jesus to get more of Him. I can remember when, when, when I had to go and work secular jobs to, to, to feed my family while we were ministering in the church. If lunchtime hit, I had my Bible, I was in my car, I was in the... the, 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 the Toilet, in the bathroom, in some kitchen, somewhere under a building. Opening the Word of God, just trying to get more of Jesus. Because when I go back to that place, people are going to want to steal what I just got. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so here, family, this world is waiting for us to reveal not only ourselves, but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let's go to the next verse. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself um, will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and the glory of the children of God. Listen what this scripture says, family. Verse 20, for the creation was subjected to frustration. Family, we are going through something that we did not ask for. Somebody else made this choice for us. The book of Genesis, it was plain and simple. Father God said, don't. And people said, I will. Amen. Sin, family. And so you and I might be going through something right now in our lives that we did not choose. Somebody close to you chose to sin and now you have to pay for it. Unfortunately, that's how sin works, family. Especially if you are in, uh, uh, if you are united to some, something or someone. If you are a unit, family, in a church, 
You are united in the church. If the pastor sins, the church is going to feel it. Amen? Amen. If the congregation sins, the pastor is going to feel it. Family, we, we do not sometimes know the consequence of sin in this world. Look what happened. Father God created a perfect life in Genesis. And in a blink of an eye, man came and messed it up. And so this is what the scripture is saying, that the creation is subjected to frustration. Lord, I don't want to be here. I don't want to go through these things. This isn't my fault. This is what we sometimes say. Amen. This is, my husband made this choice. I shouldn't have to pay for this. He must pay for the, sorry, you, you, you're a unit, you're together, you're, you're united, you're one. And so family, the only one that can take us out of this is Christ. The only one. And so we go to, to verse 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Listen what this is saying, family. This should ring true if you are sitting in a situation where you, you feel you cannot get out of this. We know that the whole creation has been groaning. How many times do you not sit every day and put your, your fingers through your hair and just, oh, Lord, when, Lord, when? Amen? Amen? And look what the, the author is liking it to, to a woman that's going through childbirth. We've spoken about this so many times, family. The only thing that is worse than a woman giving birth to a child is a man that has flu. <laughs> it's severe, family. It is. And you can hear the groans there as well. Oh, my head is like, Oh, there isn't enough salt in the food. Oh, look at this rubbish on TV. It's groaning, family. You know, he didn't ask for it, but he has to go through. It's the same with childbirth, family. The ladies... <laughs> the, la the Lord knows I'm joking, sister. <laughs> family, every single one of the ladies sitting here that has ever given birth you will know you did not ask for that pain. It was caused by someone else. <laughs> Amen. I'm not talking about your husband. Let's, let's stay calm. I'm talking about the one that chose to eat from the tree that she wasn't supposed to eat from, family. Amen. It wasn't just her fault, it was her husband's fault as well. And so the, the whole creation is groaning. Where's the Lord? When is the Lord coming? I, I think in, in, in my uh, uh, shepherd's mind reading the Bible, when Jesus said to Peter and to James and to Andrew and to John and to the rest of the disciples, hey boys, I have to go now to prepare a place for you, but I'm coming back soon. Family, can you imagine two years later, when they had built churches and the Roman Empire were hunting them like animals. Can you imagine those groans? Late at night. Not knowing where to hide. Poor Jesus. Where are you, Lord? Where are you coming? And so this is what the author is saying here to, to us. We go to the next scripture. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly. As we wait eagerly for the adoption to sonhood, the redemption of our bodies. Amen. Mm -hmm. Family, the Bible says we've been adopted. Has, has our daddy come to fetch us yet? C can you imagine this, family? You're sitting in a, 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 a house full of children that don't have parents. And... The, the, the principal comes to you and says, hey, somebody has signed papers. They've adopted you. Have you been taken yet? No, you're still there. They, they, they're coming soon. They're just sorting out the house for you. They want to paint your room. They want to put nice duvets and blankets for you. They want to make sure the carpet is new. They're coming for you. You get what I'm saying, family? 
They've already been adopted. They just haven't been taken yet. It's the same with us. We've got a dad. We've got a father. We just haven't been taken to him yet. It's not to say we won't get there. We're going to get there, family. We are. Jesus is making that way. He's already put that bridge there. The bridge being the cross. And so, verse 23. We go to verse 24. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? Can you see the absolute spiritual logic here, family? If you have met Jesus and you have seen him face to face, there is a hope inside of you. And not a hope of, you know, a wish that it will come true. That's not what he's speaking about here is that that's the only thing we hope for, is that when we end our life here on earth, that we will see Jesus. That, that, that's it. And he's speaking exactly about that here. Verse 25. But if we hope for what we do not have yet, we wait patiently for it. Amen? Patiently. Somebody comes to you and says, um, uh, Brother Peter, I've got a beautiful Massey Ferguson tractor for you. Brand new. Out of the box. It's got that new tractor smell. Yeah. I'm going to give it to you soon. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so you don't have it yet, but you hope for it. And once you have it and you're sitting in it with that air conditioning and all the nice heating and the, it's got surround sound and it's got nice boosts and whoo, you can plow up a field with that. You don't need to hope anymore. Amen. Because you've got it. Amen. And this is what he is speaking about here. Verse 26. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I don't know about you, but I am extremely weak without the Lord. <clears throat> I've heard a few amens there. We do not know. What we are ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Amen. You know, every time you and I sigh, family, it's a prayer going up to our Father. And Jesus is there next to the Father, and He's saying, Father God, that's my son, that's my daughter. Amen. Remember what we spoke about last week, family? Satan might be there as well, accusing. And Jesus is there as the advocate saying, Father, there's no evidence. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's, it's false accusations. There's no evidence. The evidence is on the back of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, verse 27, is it? And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with each one of our wills. No, brother, no sister. In accordance to God's will. Amen. Sometimes if I don't want to listen to, to the Lord, which happens a lot to, to us, there will be hurdles in front of us that I constantly hit my shins on until I stand there and say, no, I don't want the shin hit anymore. I want to listen now. Yeah. This is what is happening here, family, is according to God's will and not mine. Verse 28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who have not yet met Him. Look what the scripture says, family. Everything works out for the good for those who love God. Amen. You and I, family, cannot love Someone we have not yet met. We cannot love someone we don't have a relationship with. We cannot love someone we don't do life with. You can't. It's, it's impossible. That, family, is why a lot of people on earth don't love governments. Amen? They don't know them. They don't have a relationship with them. They don't live with them. They don't do life with them. They just hear promises and then see different things. That's why a lot of people don't love governments. Family, if you and I are stating to love Jesus, somewhere along the line we must have met Him. 
We must be walking with Him. We must recognize His voice when He speaks. And so, verse 29, For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and those, excuse me, He predestined. He also called, those He called, He justified, those He justified, He glorified. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And that, family, is not showing the glory of Jacques. No. That is people pointing to flawed Jacques and say, He could have only done that because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because Jacques Fouché could definitely not do that. He could definitely not say that. He could definitely not move there. Are we, are, are we hearing this, family? It's not our glory, it's, it's God's glory. And everything we do and say and move and act and react according to the Word of God brings our Father in Heaven glory. To go out every single day purposely and saying to ourselves that today I will live to bring glory to my Father. I will not, if someone screams and shouts at me, lift my hand. I will not, if someone screams and shouts at me, answer them back in a way that Jesus would not answer them. Because why? Because I want my Father at the end of this day to get the glory. Amen. And then, family, we're getting to the last piece of this, and this is the good piece. Let's have a look at this. What then shall I say in response to these things? If God is for us, this family is the greatest rhetorical question ever. There isn't an answer to this. Amen. If God, Father God on His throne, with Jesus Christ His Son and the Holy Spirit the Counselor, is for us, show me a person, an organization, a government, an institution that then can be against us. Does that mean that we will not be persecuted and slandered? No, nope, that's not what that means. What it means is, family, is when Satan came to Father God and said, I have searched this whole world and I've only found one that honors you. And that one is, is, is Job. But if you curse him, he's going to turn on you. And Father God said to Satan, Take anything of him, but leave his life alone that does not belong to you. Amen? And so this world, family, might, might have the right to take things from us that make our life comfortable, but they can, in Jesus' name, not touch your or my life. They can't. They can maybe end my physical life here on earth. By one day, Jacques, do you believe in Jesus? Yes, and a bullet. But my soul, family, no human owns that. Only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so, if God is for us, who can be against us? Listen how much He is for us. Verse 32. He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also along with Him, graciously give us all things. Yippee! We're going to get things! Yay! <laughs> I can ask for that new couch. No, family. No, no, no. No. Let me bring this to the original Greek. What that things means is speaking here of the gifts and the talents the Holy Spirit has for us. Amen? To lay hands on the sick. To cast out demons, to speak in tongues. That's what this thing is speaking about. It's not about a new fancy youth. It's not. No. Or a tractor. Sorry, Brother Peter. <laughs> Next verse. Verse 33. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God Himself who justifies. Family, how many times have you and I gone out and done the things that Jesus requires of us to do and this world judges us? They can't. They're not our judges. Amen? As long as my father on his throne says, my boy, I'm pleased with you, this world can say what they want. This world is going to say what they want. 
Have you ever picked up, family, there's certain people in your life that if you do good to them, they, they, they say bad things. <coughs> if you do bad things to them, they say bad. It doesn't matter what you do in their life, they've got something bad to say. Amen? So, my humble outlook in life is, yeah, irrelevant what people do or say to you, make sure that you live your life to the absolute fullest for Jesus. Because ultimately, family, he is one day the one that's going to stand in front of us and say, well done, my good and faithful servant, or please depart from me, I don't know you. And so, verse 34, <clears throat> who then is the one who condemns? No one can condemn us. The scripture says, Jesus Christ, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, but at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. I don't know about you, family, but I've been in prayer sessions before, prayer meetings, prayer sessions, call, call it what, what we want, where someone was anointed with the gift of prayer, and they started praying in that prayer session, and it felt like I was standing in a, a, a spiritual um, waterfall. It was just anointing all over the place. You know, unfortunately, family, your and my prayers cannot help or save or heal each other. But the prayers that are prayed in and through us by our intercessor, Jesus Christ, that can heal. Amen? Amen? How many times have we not found ourselves praying for someone, and when the prayer is finished, we realize that, whoops, I just prayed my will into their life. How many times has that happened, family? Somebody comes to you for healing, and you pray for healing your way. Maybe, maybe it doesn't, didn't happen to you yet. But how many times does that happen in our lives, family? And so it's a good idea that when we pray, to ask the intercessor to help us pray. Isn't that what Jesus said to the disciples? He even taught the disciples how to, to pray. Jewish boys that thought they knew that they went to Jesus and said, How should we pray, Lord? And the Lord taught them how to pray. We now go to verse 35. And the Bible says, Who shall separate us from the love? of Christ. Look what he is asking here, family. He's not saying, who will separate us from a church that you are sitting in? No. He's saying, who will separate you and me from the love of Jesus? There is no such person. Who will separate us um, from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword. Have a look here, family. This is maybe, this is, has got better words than what I was trying to say just now. Okay. If you and I have met Jesus and we have a relationship with him, none of these things will be able to separate us from Christ. None. You will know immediately if somebody has met Jesus and if they belong to, to Jesus through the persecutions that come into their life. I have met many people, family, and maybe you, you as well, that in a church service, in a, a revival service, wherever, have stood up and said, yes, I want to accept Jesus. Two weeks, two months, two years down the line, persecution hits, they lose someone close, close to them, and they turn on God and say, why did you do this to me? I don't want to serve you anymore. Family, they haven't met the Lord. They've heard of Him. Amen? Those people who have met the Lord face to face, in the Word of God and in spirit, there's nothing that can separate you from the love of, of Christ. Nothing. And so, as it is written, for the sake, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Yeah, the preacher is speaking to the congregation. He's saying, listen, um, brothers and sisters, we go out and do and say things that you do not do. We do it for your protection. We do it to save you. 
If you are a good shepherd of a church, you pray for every congregation member. You pray for their finances, for their property. You pray for their marriages. You pray for their, 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 um, their future. You pray for their past. You pray for everything. And sometimes, while you are praying, the enemy doesn't like that. He doesn't like someone standing up, clothed in the armor of God, fighting for God's people. And so sometimes you might receive a, a, a knife in the back from the very people that you are praying for. Family, just know that Jesus said it's going to happen. It happened to him with one of his disciples. Why would it not happen to you and me? Verse 37. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Family, Jesus died on the cross so that you and I don't have to go to, to the cross. Can you imagine what that setup would be like in our lives if Jesus did not come to die on the cross, but it was required of each of us to die on the cross? Who, who of us would willingly go, family, and say, I, I want to save my life into eternity. I'll go to the cross. Oh, and by the way, I don't only want to die to save my life. I want to die to save everybody in the church's life. Eww, family, that's a rough one. Why? Because we know each other. Yeah? And we know that sometimes there's masks sitting in a church, but when we're out of the church, the mask is off. We know that, family. <coughs> And so there's almost a guarantee that we as humans will not offer up, sacrifice our lives for somebody that does not love um, us in the same way. Um, verse 38, for I am convinced. What does what convinced mean, family? That there's nobody that will be able to, to, to change your mind. I am convinced. That neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, or any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. There is nothing that will be able to separate you and me. Family, I want to end this morning. On this scripture, if this scripture hasn't done it, it yet, nothing else will. But I want to end this morning and I want to say, it's almost certain that each one of us sitting here this morning is going through something that we don't want to go through. Whatever it is. Um, it, it, it might be something at your work, it might be something with your spouse, it might be something with your children, it might be your finances. There's so many things there is a possibility that you are going through at this very moment that you don't want to go through. There's a lot of things maybe in your life that you have to do and not want to do. Because if you don't do it, you're going to upset certain people and then it could just cause a, a, a bigger eruption in, in your life and theirs. So I want to say this morning to you, family, it's a good idea. There is no psychologist or psychotherapist on this earth it will be able to help us out of our anxieties, problems, depression, pains, like Jesus Christ can. There is no. They're going to charge you hordes of money, and you're going to walk away sometimes even more confused. But clinging to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, He is the one that loves us. He is the one that gave His life for us. He is the one that knows us even before we were born. Even before we were placed on this earth, Jesus knew us. And so it would be a good idea, family, to go out into this week, to take that thing that you and I are battling and struggling with, and lay it before the throne of the Father and say, Father God, I as a human, but I can't deal with this anymore. I can't. I've made an absolute, utter mess of, of it. But the one that can deal with it, the one that can secure my future going forward is the love of my soul, Jesus Christ. I'm going to end by, by saying this, family. I've said this a lot, but I, I, I mean it. If you are a man, I can only speak to, 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 to the men this morning because, because I am one. If you are a man and you have met your, your true love, your, your, your spare room, and, and you'll know that, family, if you've met your right 
wife, brothers, you will know that every now and then you get a tremendous pain. You know that missing rib? Why? It's because she's got hurt. Amen? And so, as brothers, if you have met your, your spare rib, the, the helper that Jesus Christ has given you, you will know, family, that from the first moment, brothers, that you set your eyes on her, your whole life changed. Everything changed. Food tasted different. Colors were brighter. The sun came up an hour earlier and fell down an hour later. Your dreams were, were, were spread with, with, with all sorts of laughter and joy. It, it was absolutely amazing. Amen? And so it's the same just times a million billion when you meet Christ, family. You will know when you have met Christ just as if you have a young man living in your family that steps into the, 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 the house one day, not the same way he stepped out. This guy is on fire, yeah? And you know he's met someone. Amen? And people will know in your life and my life family if we have met Jesus, if we know Jesus the way that we talk about him. Amen? The way that we relay what Jesus has done for us and in our lives. The way that we, we describe Jesus to, to people. Because a young man that has just met his, his soon-to-be wife won't describe at the workplace with the other young men his wife as being, yeah, she's okay. No, no, no. He will say, Whoa! she took my breath away. I still don't have it. Everything has changed. Amen. The way that, that, that he describes her family, Jesus Christ is the lover of our souls. Can you imagine how Jesus describes us to the Father? Think about that, family. How does Jesus describe you to the Father? How does He describe us if the enemy accuses us to the enemy? How does Jesus describe us? No, I'm sorry, that's, that's wrong. My son, my daughter is perfect. They are beautiful. They are unique. They are special. They are a prince or a princess. They are deemed to spend eternity with me. That that you just said now, that's not them. Amen? And so family, when people speak about Jesus in a way that is not true, represent Him in a way that is true. Speak to this world on who the lover of your soul is. So as we go out this week, family, I pray in Jesus' name this morning, Father God, that those who are sitting here that have not yet met the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the way, the truth, and the life, the true Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lion of Judah who have not yet met Him, Lord. Father, I pray that somehow You will stir up a desire and a hunger in them to meet Jesus, to get to know Jesus. Please, Father God, I pray, Lord, that nothing else will matter in this week but us seeking the face of Yeshua. I pray, Father God, that the Holy Spirit will guide us, lead us, teach us, guide us to, to where we need to go, where we need to sit down, what we need to read, what we need to listen to, to be able to, to, to find the true Jesus, the one that saved us. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we pray. Again this morning for, for every single one of us, Lord, that is going through a difficult time, something that we cannot sort out by ourselves, we pray, Father God, that through the Holy Spirit, we will know that Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us, and that Jesus and Him alone has all the answers, Lord, to hold on to His cloak for healing, that we may see again if we were blind, that we may hear again if we were deaf, that we may speak again if we were mute. Thank you, Father God, that there came a time in our lives that you chose to call us. And hopefully, Father God, we listened carefully to that calling and we responded. So blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.